سفیر پاکستان آپ کے جذبوں کا ترجمان وطن سے دور وطن کی آواز اور آپ کی پہچان سفیر پاکستان آئے تماد نمائندوں کی ٹیم کے ساتھ جیو کا مصروف پروگرام سفیر پاکستان سب سے پہلے اور سب سے آگے سفیر پاکستان ایکٹیولی ورکس ٹو سٹرینتھن دی بانڈ بٹوین پاکستانی امریکن اکراس دا نیشن Thank you, Safir Pakistan, for continuing to put together a positive image of Pakistan. American siyasat mein ahem kirdar. 25 saala nashirat ka lagatar musalsal lawami platform, Safir Pakistan. I really appreciate Wakar Ali Khan who carries this process very well indeed. Palbal ki sabre aur community raapto ke saath lagatar. Ubharte yor kamyaab wa kamram loogo ki daastan. Aap tak pochane mein sab se pehle sab se aage. putting up a great program, running an excellent platform for bringing like minds together. Congratulations for putting a great program together and thank you for connecting so many Pakistanis from all over America to each other. To get everybody together as a community, we have seen that he works really hard. And I'm so happy that you chose to start this program of Honoring high achievers of our community. हर जगह हर पल आपका अपना सफीर पाकिस्तान नजर आता है Islamic Center of Inglewood, California held an iftar dinner in honor of Homeland Security officials where a large member of high officials participated at the event from various departments in Los Angeles. The event was conducted by Mr. Jamal Khwaja and many officials from various departments spoke about the spirit of Ramadan and fasting. Many community leaders participated including President of Council of Pakistan, Dr. Imran Sharif, President Islamic Center of In and Empire, Dr. Shoei Patel, Chairman Pakistan American Chamber of Commerce, Bakarli Khan, Mr. Adnan Khan, and Samin Faruqi, and many others. President Javid Bawa and Chairman Mr. Bola thanked everyone for participating in this event. An OPTV Global Report by Bakarli Khan. <laughs> Allah the most beneficent he taught mankind the Quran he created mankind and taught him eloquent speech the Sun and the moon move in their fixed course exactly by precise calculation and the stars and the trees both prostrate and the heaven he has raised high and imposed the balance. This time I would like to invite the chairman of Islamic Society of Inglewood, Mr. Ahmed Bola. You believe in something. What was you believe in? That's where we define the relations. I always tell the people, only 10%, even whether you're Muslims, you're Christian, you're Jews, you're Sikhs, only 10% of what you believe in is something to do with the God. But God said that 90% of all my religion is towards the communities, towards the humanity. That's what religion is all about. You must go to serve the community. You should have compassion to the community. You should love the each other. You should be together. You should be united. Never ever do want in the name of the religion, then you are lost the very fundamental belief, part of the system you are living in. You defeat the very purpose which you believe in. That's what religion is all about. After something has occurred, uh, fear tends to creep into people's minds, and fear tends to make poor decisions. If you think about your own lives and, and things that we've all done, me included, is that when I was in a, in a period of stress or fear, or, I generally made poor decisions. I didn't make good decisions as, as when I was thinking uh, very clearly uh, about things. And, and I think people, especially here in the United States, tend to, when they get fearful, they tend to think poorly and make poor choices. And it tends to draw people apart rather than bring people together. Look for 
people with integrity to wear our badge, who are also representative of people from all over the world, from every nation, from every creed, from every color, from every ethnicity and, and faith. Um, and that is part of our success, is to have people who um, care about people from wherever they are, to, to show support of them, to show service towards them, um, and to be respectful. And that's what we um, feel strongly about at, at the airport police, uh, as we do with our colleagues uh, all over uh, the state of California and throughout the country in law enforcement. I invite Mark Frontorota, Chief of Inglewood Police Department, to come and say some words. Really what, you know, being part of the community is all about. We're all together uh, sharing food like tonight when we break the fast. We look forward to that. I'm sure all of us do. But uh, I know that means a lot to the officers and it's a real uh, community building uh, team effort. And I know that uh, my officers really enjoy that. It also uh, gives everybody like my fellow officers we're talking about <laughs> You know the perspective on life and the people and the dignity of uh, human human life and the ability to worship uh, in what we believe in freely and safely. Uh, as you know, this being the host city here in Inglewood PD, I take a lot of pride uh, in reaching out to all of you, Slava, to ensure that everything is okay here. I know my supervisor stopped through many times uh, to check on everybody if there's an issue. Because uh, we're all in this together, and uh, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in that, and certainly my officers uh, demonstrate that, and they also believe in that. And I know that um, in many years to come, this this relationship is only going to grow and become stronger, and, uh, and and we still look forward to those. The officers look forward to those uh, dinners on those special days. We do truly appreciate that. Um, so we look forward to that. And again, we're here for you, and I'd be remiss, I say this all the time, Inglewood PD's hard. So if you know people out there, friends, relatives, loved ones, uh, just go online and fill out the app. Uh, we also have a Citizens Academy. If you look on our website, we welcome you to join that. And they run peri periodically through the year. We're in the middle of one right now, but we run three or four years. So if you go on our website, uh, you can see that. I would love to see people uh, in this audience or, uh, you know, look into that and uh, join that endeavor. Also, we have great cadet and explorer programs for the young ones. So I'm going to hold you all to that. I want to see some of, you, some of these things. So again, thank you. God bless. And uh, I just want to say welcome to Inglewood again. So at this time, I would like to invite the Chief of Hotham Police Department, Michael Ishii. Good evening, I'll make it brief. Uh, as a six month chief, brand new. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've been with the uh, Hotham Police Department for 29 years. I started when I was 14. But, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the two words that come out uh, as, as we sit here, we've been here uh, very for, you know, fortunate for several years now. Uh, but it's a privilege uh, and an honor to be here. It's a privilege because, uh, as, as we all know, um, this here doesn't happen everywhere. To have the leadership of police departments around here to sit here uh, with you to build relationships. And for that, it is a, uh, it's something we should be grateful for, but it's something that uh, uh, comes with hard work and the continual building of relationships. And having these opportunities for us uh, is a privilege and an honor to be here. Um, what you should know is that all of the police departments here, LAPD, Inglewood, LAX, uh, what you should know is that we all work well together and it is a high priority for us to have a great relationship so that when things go right or wrong, we're always working with each other. <coughs> For example, a couple of months ago, we had an officer that was, uh, that was shot during a domestic violence uh, incident. And, you know, for, for agency our size, sometimes it, uh, we don't have enough resources, but at the same time, we had all of the agencies from LAPD, the sheriffs, LAX, Inglewood, all uh, show up to offer help. I'm proud to be here as a representative of the Transportation Security Administration. Our mission <coughs> is to protect the nation's transportation systems to ensure freedom of movement for people of commerce. And that is not just vital 
for the airport, but it's vital for the whole community. Um, the, this airport that we think of things going on right now generated 621,000 jobs in 2014, and it has grown quite a bit since then. That's the latest statistics they put up for us. And those jobs generate $37 billion in just people's salaries and $127 billion worth of business and revenue and taxes and 87 and a half million travelers came through that airport. Some of them traveling on your street apparently right by here really fast on the way to the airport. Uh, <coughs> but on a national scale, this airport contributes to 7% of all US jobs. So just generating that much money. So. Imagine what would happen if a significant incident happened at our airport or another big airport. If something happened that would shut down our airport, it, it would just be catastrophic, not just for the economy here in Los Angeles, but it would spread across the country. <coughs> something pretty catastrophic happened at the end of last year and the beginning of this year. The government shut down for 35 days. At this point, I would like to invite my friend Sort of a teacher, uh, custom and border supervisor at LAX, Bill Hicks. A couple of people when I came here today, they said, Bill, what's up with your hair? And I said, <laughs> it's, it's, right? If you've seen me a lot, it's like really goofy. Normally I never talk about my appearance, but there's actually a story here. So I go in to, to get my hair cut today. Because I told my, the guy who cuts my hair, I said, look, I'm going to talk to some people tonight. I want to look good. He said, well, who are you going to talk to? I said, well, I'm going to a house of worship. I'm going to a mosque. I'm going to talk to some people that I really like and respect and have worked well with over the years. He said, don't worry about a thing. I got you. And so I'm sitting back and I'm relaxing and I'm trusting and everything like that. And pretty soon he like takes, you know, he's got done all the cutting and then he takes out the blow dryer, which he never does. And he's like blow drying my hair higher and higher and higher. And I'm just like going, what is going on? And so when he's done, he hands me the mirror and he says, look at it. And he said, why are you giving me such a huge hair? He said, Bill, you're going to talk to some prayerful people. And he said, it's just like my mom always told me back in Texas, the bigger the hair, the closer to God. <laughs> I gave a big tip. Look again. <laughs> Thanks again for, for inviting me back uh, again this year for uh, to share this in our dinner with all of you. Um, I've heard it said that if you stand still long enough, uh, the entire world is going to pass you by or walk by you. And at Customs and Border Protection, right, this is, uh, certainly seems true. You know, we stand at the border, you know, at every single international airport, seaport, and land border. And um, day in and day out, we watch everybody walk, drive, sail, or fly by us. And sometimes the best of these times are when people stop for a minute and converse with us, right? When they pause their momentum for a few minutes and we become more than just blurs to each other. And I suppose that's how I came to be here tonight. I met some folks from this community, and we stopped for a minute and made a connection. Then we became acquaintances and even friends, and when CBP had its first Citizen Academy, over half of that class came from this mosque, right? We all, a lot of, everybody has a, a Citizen Academy, right? But this, the group from here, there are charter members, and I'll always have a special place in my heart for that. Um, now I have new acquaintances and new friends, and I see them all the time, not only at the airport, but out in the community. In fact, just two days ago, I was at the uh, celebration for the National Day for Azerbaijan, and I saw two of my friends from this community there. And it was so nice just to see a friendly face, just to see people that I knew. I mention all this because it underlines, I think, the importance and the effectiveness and the value of making these one-on-one -on -one human connections. Who among us is wise enough to know where these connections will lead in the future? what small things or what great things may be the result of a casual conversation? What are the impacts that are possible through a handshake, a phone call, or even a text message if you know Jeff Ed, he lives on his text. How respect offered and respect given has the possibility of improving not only our own lives, but the lives of our communities. It certainly has in my case. And this is why I very much support the idea of meeting together as a community from time to time to listen, and to learn from each other, and to go forward into our momentum, into our journey, with just a little more connection and a little more humanity. So thank you again. Council 
uh, representative of Consulate of Republic of Azerbaijan here. We would like him to come and say something. Uh, great pleasure to be here and to share meal at this iftar dinner with you. Just brief information about Azerbaijan. We are a mostly Muslim country, about 95 of population of Azerbaijan are Muslims. And in, in my country, Sunnis are Shias are praying uh, together even in the same mosques. Also, we have... <laughs> also, besides that, we have large Christian and Jewish uh, communities and uh, synagogues and churches. And uh, I want to thank, say thank again to Mr. Javid and the, to all members of Islamic Society of Inglewood. Happy Ramadan, Ramadan Karim. Thanks. We have here Sharif Rodis. She is running for a county supervisor for District 2. I would like her to come and say a few words. My name is Sharif Rhodes. I'm running for LA County Board of Supervisors, District 2. And I want to congratulate all of you on the, this holy month of Ramadan. A month of fasting, purification, and spiritual attainment. Now more than ever, we must learn from one another. Through our faith practices, sharing what we stand for, and opening our house. And by us building bridges together, this will help us bring stronger communities. Thank you for having me here today. In fact, like the commanding officer of counterterrorism of LAPD, Horace Frank. Assalamu alaikum. Wow, that was, that's a pretty bad spot. <laughs> Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for having us here. You know, um, I, I really enjoy uh, coming here to enjoy these events, to, to, to participate in these events. And what it really goes to show is the the partnership that we've been able to develop over the years with uh, members of our with, with members of our Muslim communities. Uh, Chief uh, Moore wanted to be here this evening, and I know he sent the invitation, he just could not, he had a couple of other things. But he really wanted us to express our appreciation for the partnership that we've been able to develop over the years. Um, Ramadan's a special time of the year, as we all know. And the fact that you choose to invite us to share these moments with you means a lot to us. It really does. And it is our intention to continue this partnership, continue this uh, this initiative of openness, and um, anything that we can ever do to continue this relationship, which is one that we cherish very much. Anything that we can do to continue this relationship is something that we will strive to continue to do with our partners. So thank you very much. This time I would like to invite Special Agent in Charge, Intelligence Division of FBI, Stephen Woolery. To the Inglewood Mosque leadership, dignitaries, friends, colleagues, my uh, fellow colleagues here on the dais, uh, Ramadan Kareem to all. It is indeed an honor to be here with you uh, tonight and on behalf of the 1,500 uh, men and women of the Los Angeles FBI, uh, it, is, it is indeed our pleasure uh, to be invited here. And, you know, I've been here four years, and I've been uh, here at the Inglewood Moth during the holy month of Ramadan every year. And every year, it feels more and more like a reunion. And, you know, for, for many of you, uh, I see you at the Citizens Academy, uh, that the FBI holds. I see you at other gatherings, and it isn't just uh, during this time of the year, but it's 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 all year round, really. So uh, it's always good to see everyone. And I have a few remarks. So uh, for those of you that were at Imran's uh, iftar dinner, uh, this may sound familiar, but I think it's uh, it's good to uh, say these things uh, here in this. Uh, uh, mosque because uh, first of all it's coming from the heart and secondly uh, I think it's important for uh, for us to hear this so the the virtues that uh, that you seek that we seek uh, the values that we pursue during the holy month of Ramadan those values of self-reflection charity spiritual growth resilience patience love Discipline, uh, discipline, 
uh, to be able to uh, fast for 30 days, uh, my, you know, mad respect, if I can uh, go to the vernacular. Um, I don't know how you do it uh, other than, uh, it's, you know, it's your faith and uh, it, it's just remarkable to me. But out of all of these virtues, discipline really uh, stands out for me. But other virtues such as caring for those who are less fortunate, Unity, community, I'll say that again, community, respect, these are the very values that make our country great. The ideals on which our country was founded, and you know, it's, everyone knows that our country has a rich uh, and diverse history that's steeped in institutions of faith, tradition, and the freedom to worship as one nation under God. We are one nation under God. We are one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So as I close, I want to extend the best wishes for a blessed month as you observe the Ramadan traditions of charity, fasting, and prayer. And may God bless you and your families. Sorry for me a little bit late. I was going from Blythe California, which is near the Arizona border, so yeah, we can expect him to be I'm very honored to be here and proud to be Javed's friend. I've known him for a little bit over a year at this point. He's been to our HSI Citizens Academy and he saw what HSI does and doesn't do. And um, just this is a very special day for everybody, and I'm proud to be here. So. Uh, also, just a little bit about me. I'm the ICE Community Relations Officer, and that's how I end up meeting Jabez since he's like quasi politician for the community. Um, so that's what I do. If you guys want to talk to me after the fact, or you know, I'm open to uh, hear any uh, comments or any answer any questions. Thank you. I'd like him to come and give some remarks. Shweb server. Some of the faces on the offices are. I've tried to recognize quite a few. No, the gentleman here. Yeah. Uh, um, this month is uh, is very important for the Muslims as uh, we fast, and it is also important in Pakistan's history because Pakistan gave its independence in the month of. Ramadan. And uh, in a couple of uh, weeks we will be celebrating Eid al-Fitr. So the earlier uh, speakers have uh, typed this subject and I think it's important that we remind ourselves in this month of the people who are uh, less fortunate than us and try to help them in whatever ways is possible. And our religion, Islam, uh, focuses a lot on encouraging the Muslims to help their help other human beings regardless of their caste religion and uh, it's really I'm really happy always happy to see a uh, Muslim community in the live the US reaching out to the members of other faith and and uh, and inviting them to share their happiness in, in all these occasions uh, Pakistanis uh, one of the characteristics of the Pakistanis I think that some of you probably know that when they give global statistics, they present Pakistan as a country where, as a percentage of the economy, we are probably one of the uh, least uh, amount of percentage of income we pay as taxes. But another, on the other side, Pakistanis probably have, as a percentage of their income, they pay the highest ratio as charities probably anywhere, anywhere in the world. So this is a... very strong uh, character of our uh, society and community and 
I think uh, this is important that uh, we also transfer it to our children and teach them to uh, to share the blessings of God with those who are less fortunate than us. Because sometimes or often it happens as fellow human beings that we, when we reach success, we sometimes don't realize, we sometimes attribute it just to our own self and there are many often many factors that you often don't realize that people who, are, who often don't have those opportunities and be left out, how do they feel? And so therefore it is important, even uh, the new speaker said that if you don't eat in a month, uh, in this month, then you feel like a like child feels like how they, and uh, probably a poor person feels and that is also one of the, probably the purposes of the, of this exercise that God had in, when the Muslims were asked to ask for a month. So I just uh, want to again uh, congratulate all of you on uh, on uh, this occasion and um, being very, I'm very happy to be among you here today. Thank you very much. Not the last speaker, but Javed Baba. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Stringy Guest, and the members of the community, thank you very much, Inglewood Mosque and its community treasures and slung ties of friendship. With these great law enforcement agencies, and I appreciate you all being here and accept our invitation today. My friends, people thrive where there is a mutual respect. Civilization is built on it, and futures are better for it. But coexisting must be made and made again in every generation. Common good is defended only by vigilance and action, and this means more than the security measures. Humanity must arm itself with ideas, and justice today, these challenges have special importance. Our world faces an assault by terrorists with ruthless ambition. The motive is not faith. It is power pursued by ripping countries and communities apart in sectarian conflicts and inflicting suffering across the world. We and all our community depend not only our people, but our faith. This is the fight has to be carried out by the Muslim communities. First and foremost, this is a fight within Islam. And that, the same time, the danger of extremists must be seen what is global. The threat is not only in Syria and Iraq, the distress, Libya, Yemen, Sinai, Mali, Nigeria, the Horn of Africa, Asia, America, and Europe. Europe has suffered respectable attacks and so on. My friends, let me suggest one area of importance. The first and foremost is meaningful interfaith, outreach, engaging people where they live. A dialogue of respect is a rock bed of all societies. Attacking and excluding others, insulting other people's faith and their convictions is no way forward. The future lies in unity and respect, not division and stereotypes. Our community is an important partner in this effort, especially helping to stop the global rise of Islamophobia. The poison is based on four ideas and health plays in the hands of the extremism. This is a very important clarify what is really means to be a Muslim. My friend, <clears throat> my elders, I and countless other Muslims have been taught from our earliest years that our religion demanded respect and caring for others. The Prophet Muhammad, so Allah Sallam, peace be upon him, once said, none of you has faith until you love for your neighbor what you love for yourself. This is what means to be a Muslim. The last speaker of the evening, we kept the best, uh, Adnan Khan. And his t-shirt will tell what he does, because I'm still wondering how many hats he wears. And today I serve as on the board of the FBI Citizen Academy Alumni Association. We have built a strong interfaith partnership through FBI with the communities that we work in. As I am the vice president for interfaith, for the Alumni Association. We have brought all interfaith communities together. We have also brought all communities together and we've built a strong partnership. 
Today we represent from the White House, from the interfaith at the White House, National Prayer Breakfast, with the elected officials, with all communities, and we are very proud that we have been able to hold Iftar now at different law enforcement agencies, and we've been able to bring all basically uh, law enforcement agencies together to celebrate Iftar. And I can tell you that when we had, I think we're getting close to the prayer time, so I'll just basically congratulate you all on this great event and the moment we're having. Thank you. It was very you know, fruitful and very productive. We should continue this kind of relationship with them because we need them and they need us. And it's such a you know, crisis of the times. And we really represent Islam in such a you know, beautiful way. They are very peaceful religions and we will always love to have the people. And Islam doesn't discriminate with anybody. We are all together. That's the call of Islam. And Prophet Salaam always said that God has the humanity at large. And that's your core of the religion. Your worship is fine, but the, the real thing is go out and have humanity at last, and that's what we should be doing. Uh, it's very important to have uh, uh, interfaith dialogue, uh, dialogue among communities, especially what is happening around the globe. And the message in this uh, particular event was a message of peace, message of harmony, message of unity. We all live to need to live together and take care of each other and protect each other. And uh, this, these kind of events are very much needed. And I'm glad that Inglewood Mosque has organized this event every year. And I want to congratulate the Board of Directors for organizing an excellent uh, event. Alhamdulillah, this food was hosted by Alwatan Restaurant. I will tell you that this is the first Indian halal restaurant in LA County, which has been for 40 years. And for 40 years, we have served our community to serve halal food. माशाल्लाह जी जबरदस्त बहुत जबरदस्त टर्न आउट था लोगों का इंटर इंगलूड मस्जिद में हर साल इफ्तार का इंटरफेयर डिनर होता है जो कि अलवत्ता रेस्टोरेंट की तरफ से होता है और ये हमारी बड़ी खुशी की बात जगह हर पल आपका अपना सफीर पाकिस्तान नजर आता है